what does my winter garden in December 2023 look like? And I just kind of threw things in here, moving up here this summer. Um, because I'm even further in the mountains than I was before. I just picked a handful of strawberries this morning. I didn't think to videotape them before I got them, but you can see, see I still have some green ones. Really tasty, too. Okay, I've been keeping plastic over these at night because it gets so cold here. And there's frost everywhere, and it's keeping the frost off. Now, my um, some of my summer herbs have died back. Um, there's some... Um, garden crest growing in that. That is parsley. My lettuces are looking really, really good. Um, I picked a bunch of these. Uh, <laughs> look at the leaves. I think this is broccoli. Look at the leaves. Look, this is my hand on it. Um, they look a lot like kale, but I'm pretty sure this is broccoli coming up in here now, right now. And I did plant some green onions not too long back, and I've got those coming up there. Some more broccoli and calendula over here, and some lettuce tucked under the leaves. Um, the bugs are really bad here. The other place in the mountains I was living in last year, they weren't quite as bad, except for the tomato hornworms are really bad now. Knock on wood, I didn't have any tomato hornworms here this summer. But I got lots of other bugs that eat on my winter stuff, and I've washed off aphids in the middle of freezing cold weather. I never had aphids in the middle of freezing cold weather that I can remember. Do you all get aphids in the cold winter? Okay, and then I took the plastic off of this. I'm trying to keep my rosemary alive because when you're in a really cold climate, rosemary will die. When I lived in Palermo, I didn't have to worry about it. I had a huge bush, but... I'm keeping it covered so far has worked. I've been picking some calendula. You can see I've got more flowers starting to come here. Calendula likes cool weather, but they don't like being frozen, so I have to keep them cold. I think this is a um, cauliflower. And again, I'm look at that. Look how big. It just amazes me how big these things get. Um, I believe these are turnips. Ooh! I've got a um, hmm, beet growing in here. Yay! But my turnips are kind of overshadowing my beet. Um, yeah, look at that big old turnip. Wow. Okay, guys, you're going to watch me harvest my first turnip. Oh, yeah. And turnip greens. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I'm so excited. You know, I just planted these this fall. So, I've got some stuff over here that's, a lot of it's died back. Now that's licorice root plant. Um, the stuff you see laying on top is old tea from my chai tea. After I use the tea, I pour the stuff at my worms. Love that. I was actually raising worms one year and I fed them my leftover tea stuff, and they almost look like snakes. They were so big. I've never seen huge earthworms that big. Um, that's self-heal. Remember what was in that, and, and just, you know, you guys have seen some of these. They're not doing great because it's winter, but the hollyhock is still alive down there that I transplanted. There is absolutely nothing in this soil over here because it was just topsoil right in here but um yeah so that's comfrey down there it's the only little comfrey plant i have i hope to get some more my calendula is not even covered here and it's still alive it's growing low it's not it's keeping itself trying to keep from freezing because it's all low clumped together and heavy leaves it's a big onion in here too now the calendula that was sticking out over the side doesn't look too good <laughs> but what's clumped down low and together is still alive without plastic and um, I even stuck some stuff under this glass table and look I got a little calendula trying to come up there um, I'm not sure what that it's a brassica of some sort I just stuck stuff everywhere now these have died maybe I'll get some seeds but 
back under the table a little. I still have geraniums blooming right under the table, the glass top. So that is just amazing to me. The stuff out here, this is not, of course it's not covered. This is whorehound here. What's sticking up a butt way up high got frost bit pretty good, but the stuff low down is still alive and I tried covering it pretty good with leaves. I'm sorry, this thing, I, I have to put up fencing because um, I got ripped off and then I have big dogs that trying to get into my chihuahuas that come through here from out of the park and yeah, so my son's been busy so he hasn't been able to really get that up yet we did get the gates made but uh i do have some brassicas in here but the bugs are just see, look see the aphids i gotta get the hose over here and just spray them off um got some green onions in there self heal in there nothing up there but i'm just protecting the dirt and those will degrade down and actually add nutrients to the soil. The, uh, I've got everything covered for the winter. That's my rocking chair out, my glider rocker, um, because it does, the rain kind of blows in sometimes, and that's a really nice chair. I don't want to lose it. But that's my little mini porch on my shed. Let's go down and check my little mini greenhouse I kind of threw together. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've seen a couple flakes of snow falling on me. Hmm. We're not supposed to have snow, so probably won't get much. Now in here, my calendula's doing good. Of course, my peppers have all... Oh, shoot, I forgot to pick it. Rats, it's kind of soft. I don't think that's even salvageable now. Oh, you know, I keep waiting for things to get a little bit bigger. I'll just put it down there to rot. It'll feed the soil. I keep waiting for things to get bigger and bigger, and then... I shouldn't do that this time of year because I better get things while I can. <laughs> oh, look at this. In here, my Tulsi, this type of Tulsi always dies back in the cold, but I still have some. Of course, the calendula is good. My sage is really struggling. I picked a lot of that, probably more than I should have, but my neighbor needed some and for Thanksgiving, and I picked a bunch for her, which I shouldn't have done because it needed the extra leaves to stay warm. But... And I don't care. I would have done it again because you do that for people. Um, yeah, my eggplant gave up the ghost. I tried keeping it long as I could. But uh, it's just too cold. It's just too cold. But I am hoping these peppers come back in the spring. I may be getting some chickens, though. So if that happens, I don't know what I'm going to do with my plants. I'll have to take them out. I'm hoping to wait till the spring before I get the chickens. I'll put the chickens in here and I'll have to get another little something somewhere for a little greenhouse for my um, peppers because peppers take so long to mature. That down there is a mountain azalea that way up in the mountains I dug it up. So it's used to the mountain cold and everything and azaleas, they grow wild. Of course, that's where I picked this was in a wild azalea and it's not red like your like our valley azaleas. It's um kind of a pinkish, orangish, yellowish, so pretty. Some of you that have been with my channel saw it. The flowers on it that is. Okay, well that was a little bit of some of my garden, my video, just, it's really weird. This phone's always doing strange stuff. Never done this before, though. I had taken quite a bit more of some more of what I had growing, but it, it showed a few brief shots, but didn't show anything I said and cut out most of what I took pictures of. So hopefully this part takes. <laughs> Eventually I'll get another phone <laughs> someday. But anyway, um... That was some of my winter garden stuff. Now I want to talk to you about God's winter garden. Are you part of God's winter garden? How are you surviving this winter? How are you doing? Sometimes when it's very gloomy and overcast, we can get kind of down. Um, sunshine is kind of known as the happy pill. It makes you feel good. When we don't have sun for a while, it's very easy to kind of let ourselves get down a little. But if you're aware of that, 
and then you concentrate on and this is something we should do all the time anyway is concentrating on the good things that we can find now I do a lot of um, listening to various people and various videos and read um, news and um, not the mainstream sometimes I will catch a glimpse of them here or there just to see what they're saying and it just turns my stomach <laughs> but anyway I won't get into all that um, but I do get some main some mainstream news but not like CBS ABC that kind of stuff anyway I, I do a lot of different types of research but sometimes there's so much negative everywhere of everything that's going on that it it can get me down and so I've really backed off a lot of that sometimes I'll scan the news headlines and stuff like that or maybe catch a program here and there I like um, and we know which is over on rumble in different places um, I watch them occasionally I don't always agree with everything but a lot I really like LT um, they knocked him off YouTube so um, he must have been over the target because they knocked him off totally um, but anyway uh, yeah there's some you know you can get really pulled down that way but I tell you when you start researching the scriptures and looking at some of that um, that's just a bright spot that and being around God's people I have been so blessed by God's people this year so many different ones in so many different ways um, I'm just really thankful for for God's people God works through people Satan works through people too um, he has his people and God has his and it's I feel like sometimes I'm kind of in a chessboard game down here on earth almost uh, not quite but just sometimes that's there's no scripture for that thought but it's almost what I feel like sometimes um, but I would rather be on God's side than the other so because um, I like being on the winning team <laughs> But anyway, I want you, wherever you're at, whatever, you, whatever you're into, um, to keep alert, keep your mind um, open to truths. We've been lied to so much over the years. We've really been deceived a lot, majorly more than you would probably suspect. Um, and it's good to keep your eyes open to know what's kind of going on, to kind of get an idea of what might happen and how to prepare for it. The best you can all we can do is what we can do I mean I would love to be like a lot of the preppers and stuff out here but I just don't have you know after having lost everything um, you can do a little bit anytime for the winter you should be preparing and having things especially when you live way back in the hills like I do I have to have some stuff here because I can get snowed in or my car can break down and there's no major stores around here um, so I have to kind of be prepared to have something well, even if everything in the world was hunky-dory living here I would have to do that but I can't I don't have the facilities or the area to prep like a lot of preppers but in my own way I do that what I can and that's all we can do is what we can and that's what I want to encourage you to do is do what you can where you're at and don't stress over it I can't stress over this this is where I am and it's not changing that I know of unless God does some sort of a miracle or something but I'm thankful for what I do have like this little shed I mean I don't it's just been such a blessing and um, I have somewhere to put a few things in extra storage and I go back and forth from it to the my little tiny trailer and um, to get stuff because I just don't have any room in an RV you don't have much room to live for living supplies especially when you try to do everything from scratch which is really hard to do when you don't have any counter space or anything and basically all I have is a little corner of the table which is what I use and I do with what I have and I praise the Lord that I have that much because I know of some homeless people that have been wonderful people there you know that I have met and dealt with and some that helped my daughter when she went through her catastrophe last year too about six months after me and um, I shared that on another video there's some wonderful homeless people that are just living in their cars and stuff especially in California because housing is 
it's it's skyrocketed. It's just almost impossible to get any housing. Nobody makes enough money, unless you're both a couple making. But single people, the elderly, single people, people, single parents, especially with special needs children, and they're all struggling. We are all struggling majorly. Um, and a lot of us have come from... You know, like I have a really good friend here in the park and she used to raise bees and did gold panning for fun and and knew she knows how to do a lot of different things, but um, she went through some things, which is her personal story, but, and she's here now, but she's a wonderful person. There's a lot of good people that don't have big houses and just because you don't have a, a big house and a lot of stuff doesn't mean you're not a Christian, doesn't mean that you are a druggie. Um, sometimes things just happen in life and we end up where we're at. So wherever you're at, whether you have a lot or a little, I just want to encourage you to be thankful for what you do have and to try to keep your um, yourself in a good mood. That makes a big difference in your health and everything. And we need that. We need every advantage we can get to keep our health. So keep on using those herbs. Get them infiltrated in there as much as you can in your green veggies and stuff. And I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed rest of your month. And we will catch you all next time. Bye.